Hello there YouTube, this is Wilson Bits back at it again with another Inkbound Daily. Today is the solo daily for November 13th, and today we will be playing Weaver, going from Proving Grounds into Garden's Edge, and then up against Cinder. Um, lots of good single target application there, so Weaver, Constrict, seeming a little bit uh, appetizing here. We also, of course, have... Uh, Radical Rewrite, collecting orbs no longer reduces cooldown. Instead, we have to use our auto in order to reduce our cooldowns. This is, I want to say, not so notable with um, Weaver. However, it does obviously lend itself away from a Constrict build. Because we're going to theoretically want to just... Con we're pretty much looking to uh, to tether everything if that makes sense, uh, thread everything. So either we need to get into tether, which will allow us to detach a thread, and then we'd have to, again, reattach it. It's a little bit janky. Or we're just going to have to rely on purple augs that auto-refresh, um, constrict, or even, I believe there's a couple of them for um, stitch as well. Uh, all around pretty awkward but it is notably better for our um, drafted bindings we also have eager foes last two waves of all combat spawn at once again this is not very good for constrict weaver due to the fact that there's going to be a lot of enemies and we don't really have time to just like thread one and then nuke them unless of course we get uh access to shock immediately like in our first drafted binding and vestiges cannot be dropped so it's a bit of a meat map, to be honest, but at least we can grind them so long as we don't run into the same problem we did last time where, um, what am I trying to say? Same problem we had last time where, um, the vestigal shrines just simply didn't exist. Um, you're suspicious AF, my dude. Barrier potion doesn't really help us with fight one. Um, increased targeting area seems pretty good. Again, this is a wide, rich environment. So going into Stitch isn't a bad idea, and making sure that Stitch can hit multiple people is also a relatively good idea. So we'll go ahead, we'll take that. What have we got here? Um, hmm. This sure is interesting. So I'm looking at Powder Monkey stockpile, and it's very well possible for us to be able to get this Pure Spear um, immediately for our quest here, which makes sense for me account-wise, but not for, again, the run, because we're not in a uh, constrict-rich environment at all. Like, Cinder is... Cinder and the bosses are, like, the only place where it's like, okay, this is pretty freaking good. Um, otherwise, uh, one of the other playtesters, Wiffle, actually gave me the tech, or was talking with somebody else, and I just happened to be there at the time. That um, you can take Powder Monkey Stockpile here, take the double Tarnished Vaults here, and then uh, re-roll until you get, um, they say two Powder Monkey Stockpiles will do it. I That is actually true, because that's two Striker, and that would give you another 25 yet, yeah, 75 total. And then this chunk will still be available, since you only went into Tarnished Vault times two up here. So then you could come back, retrieve the Spear. I'm debating if that's worth it. I don't think that it is. <laughs> um, Clips of Extraction makes me think that maybe Future Willer is uh, what we're looking for here. We could very well like force ourselves into an Ambusher set. Hmm. It is tough. 
Uh, Moss Spyglass generally isn't going to do much for us, uh, except versus Giannis. Well, it doesn't work versus Giannis anymore. I got to start remembering that. It's going to help us versus Nim, but by that point, we're probably going to have already gotten rid of this. It also helps us versus Cinder sometimes. Cinder is usually like the furthest enemy, but sometimes it's also the Tangles, which is the enemy that has the most amount of health. So Moss by Glass, I guess, is actually pretty good for the Cinder fight as well. So this helps us late game, does nothing for our early game here. It just means that one enemy here is going to be marked, but as Weaver, we have to thread them first before we can use Constrict, so at that point it really doesn't do much of anything for us. Um, it's really looking like Future Willer, or we just do the Powder Monkey stockpile anyways. Problem is, is I believe the normal fights here do spawn like four enemies. And again, that's not very good for Constrict. If this was Radiant Market, they normally will spawn the two treasure pots, or the, the ink pots. And that's possible for you to win with that kind of a strategy but highly unlikely. I think it's got to be Future Willer here. It's also possible that it was not the right move for us to take the times two because we're going to get stuck with a bunch of whites that we possibly don't want, but we can also just not take them if that's the case. really wish that it would preview the... That does not hit you. That is misfortunate. doesn't look very good at all. Well, at least we got the turn two. That's rather rough. Uh, there's a Decade Binding right there. It's pretty appetizing. Why did I say that we were going to get full up with a bunch of stuff? Uh, this isn't um, devilish. I don't know what the heck I was thinking. Anyways, we... Mm. How comfortable are we with Ermogs here? Huh. I'll be honest, that's kind of uh, intriguing. I'll take that. Then also give me this. What do we got here? We have Cone of Frost. Eh, it's a low cooldown. Grasp is going to help our single target significantly. I don't know if we actually need help with single... No, we actually probably do need help with single target. Again, this, is, this being a wide environment... It's uh, probably that we're going to need something like Grasp in order to help our single target um, act a little bit. Is that Grasp, though? Like, it definitely feels better than uh, Cleave, in my opinion. Um, spending two doesn't seem right. It might even be Cone of Frost in a weird way. I really don't think that Cone of Frost is the play, but it, it honestly might be, to be honest. I don't see, like, the only other alternative here is re-rolling and going for Constrict into T-Bolt. Or T-Bolt into Constrict. And then that'll, like, share 75 damage with everybody on the screen, which is theoretically much better than Stitch in most situations. Cone of Frost just can ascend into so much, like, single target damage. And it's decent. The problem is, is actually, like, going into the set. Because without the without stats, like, Frostbite is useless. Well, 
functionally useless. This still hits a whole bunch of stuff. It's it's like a worst thread. We'll take grasp. What do we want here? Um Go ahead and give me an augment actually. These are terrible. I will re-roll. Critical threads is something. Sewing stitch is actually like pretty useful. So is pull and constrict actually in our current setup. We'll take pull and constrict. Vengeful infusion is pretty good coming up here. Go ahead, hit this guy. Look at that lineup up there actually. Like, kind of insane. I'll be honest, that's looking pretty good. Just need to remember not to panic here. We have eager foes. I don't think that this is the right move at all, though. Uh, we can actually pick these up very early due to the fact that, uh, well, they're here early. Or they don't reduce my cooldowns is what I'm trying to say. Bunch everybody up. Hit them with the nuke. Oh, Jesus. I don't think this is a vengeful. Although it might be. We got a lot of damage to do here. I'm going to choose to believe. If you could come down just a little bit. Oh, that's like almost perfect. Double Tempest Wrath. And now we almost have Mythos. We're going to grind this anyways. What the frick just happened? What? Oh, what? I'm I'm legitimately baffled right now. Uh, is Invig good for this set? It's probably not terrible. I'm sorry, I'm just still like befuddled. I don't think Invig is good here. Um, we'll re-roll. Quicken is decent. If it gets prepared, Quicken is kind of insane. It might also be incendiary. Incendiary deals a truck ton of damage. Low cooldown. We get radical rewrite. 
Yeah, I think it's incendiary. Put four additional stacks of burn. That's not what I want at all. Uh, let's get Quicken Stitch. I think that's... Up our alley. Uh, we have burn stuff now. Burnathol might be a good idea. I think this might be a reroll. Another future willer. Future willer, liquidate the decayed binding. <laughs> Can we actually search for these things? Hold up. Mythos. Okay, so we don't get mythos until, like, green. So it really doesn't pay for us to... Um, we could reroll for a silenced metronome. I don't think that that's correct. Honestly, I think we're just happy with our Tempest Wrath at this point. Um, getting magic damage would help, because that's what that is. Um... I think I'm going to take the future Willer. And take me to another Binding Empowerment. Huh. Reducing grasp cooldown seems like pretty good here. Just debating if that's actually the right move here. Um, two crit augs here. Explosive incendiary is 12% for a green. That's actually not bad. It also adds, it like puts us at 10 stacks of burn. It's not terrible. I think I'll take that. And then coming up here, give me another green augment over the cache. Okay. We are officially cooking. It's actually better for me to pick this up. Or it's equivalent. There's really no reason not to pick it up. Besides, the positioning is probably better than what we're gonna get. Yeah, okay, the positioning was significantly better than what we got. And now we want to leave one of these down. Because it's just going to mean more... Orbs in the future, except that we just nuked them. I keep forgetting that we're a thunderstorm. Alright, nothing here is really tempting me. Let's re-roll once. Silence metronome is something. Uh, Quill and Catcher 2... Get some compound interest in there. Decent income. Quill and Catcher isn't bad. Because we're going to liquidate this Hermong's egg. Silence Metronome gives us another smite. Technically targeted. Everything gains another 20 damage. Eh. Like I have so much stuff that I need to liquidate and no room to actually hold it. 
We'll take the Quilling Catcher, though. Let's get that negative one cooldown. We want to go to this Vesticle Shrine. We should do the right thing and go here, see if there's anything here that we want. We really don't want to spend anything, but there's our Mythos and even more money. Um, yeah, that's kind of insane. We can't drop anything, though, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, basically, we would buy this because it's going to make its money back. We have Mythos. We're going to drop some, uh, some epic vestiges. But um, we're honestly going to have to like keep liquidating in order to keep ahead of this damn thing. Um, because we've filled ourselves up. Okay, so we liquidate Ermong's egg by Nidus. Oh, I didn't... I was at full health. I clicked on that thing and had a mini heart attack. Thank you, Ermog. Oh, that already puts us at Mythos 4. So we don't even have to really pick this up. The only reason to pick this up would be to get closer to Mythos... 6, which is Legendaries. I don't think that that's necessary... I think that taking Elusive Whisper here and then liquidating it in Decayed Binding to free up space is what we're actually looking at here. Nidus is going to give us a ton of shit, though. I still don't think that it's um, the right move. Alright. And then we need to remember we need one Glyph Reward. All enemies are about to get nuked. Oof. Um, we do have an issue, though, and that is that that's not going to be enough to actually, like, uh, kill all the enemies. So Silent Metronome would actually have taken off... That would still not have taken off half your health. I think I need to, like, bop everybody once. Which is kind of weird, but also not technically wrong. Do I actually just hit you with this? Keep him alive for a turn. Yeah. a little weird. Take that in order to leave two more next turn. Um, really doesn't pay to do any other infrastructure here. You guys all about to get nuked. Oof. Yeah, I don't know if we're actually going to make this uh, this turn limit here. I 
really doesn't matter how much damage we take. Feel like the trick. Is more incendiary, except the game says no. Yeah, we're gonna lose this by one turn, I believe. Now we finally get a crit. Thank you, game. Out of all these times that we used it, one extra turn took damage. Honestly, all things considered, not bad. We just got very unlucky with crits which didn't put anything into crits, so I guess it's not too super unlucky. What do we got here? Um, cap tangle damage. Thread everything around them. I don't think so. I think that splice is probably okay. It's just going to be super awkward. Uh, that is useless for us. Feeling incendiary gives us a damage multiplier that we currently don't have. Constricting knots is not worth a purple right now, in my opinion. Uh, feeling incendiary is fine. We definitely appreciate that. Hello there, I honestly don't feel like this 10% more is going to be, like, fruitful. So we're going to get rid of that. We're going to grind Elusive Whispers. And I think we're actually going to hold on to Decayed Binding for a little... Mm. Hmm. Thing is, is that if we grind Decayed Binding and get another one, then we have first three turns, which is kind of nice. That's kind of where I'm sitting at right now. We're going to go ahead without it. Or with it. Because I think that we can do a lot of nuking on turn one with all this mana that we have. We need a Glyph Globe. We're going to take it now. Because we honestly may never see another one again. It's a Reno. Oh, man. Should pick that up. I love to see it. Paradigm shift. I probably shouldn't have picked that up, but we have it now. That's actually potentially catastrophic. We might grind that as soon as possible, even though it does literally nothing for us. Um, golden egg. We'd really appreciate not having that. Barbed bones is worth grinding. I mean, technically, so is Vigorous here. Like, that's pretty... Pretty chef's kiss. There's a grinder. Rare Augment, Big Quilling Cage... I really don't think that a big quilling cage is necessary, but I guess we are technically collecting compound interest on it. Or we're actually collecting the most amount of compound interest that we can, so let's take the rare augment. Oh, here we go. The zap. Thank <laughs> you. 
It's kind of annoying positioning here. We have enough will, though. It should be fine. I think we get you. Pick up this orb. Get you. This is a single target now. I now understand the the errors of my ways. Okay. Realizing that we do not have uh, AoE anymore is kind of an issue, but at least we don't need it for our bosses? Question mark? Uh, I don't think that Flash Fire is the correct move here. One, uh, six turn cooldown is absolutely horrendous for us right now. I mean, at least Splice is reducing it, but doubling our stacks of burn is not, like, worth it right now. Um, dealing burn damage, maybe. Like, this is the one that doesn't, like, affect anything. What is our augments over here? Free and free? Even more fire? I guess this is the closest thing to AoE that we're going to get. Oh boy. I will take real friction. Unless I want green augs, there's really no way, reason to go here. Um, I think that means that uh, it's a sea breach. Hello? We're going to take a random rare stat boost. They do exist. Some extra health seems pretty good, but also crit chance that we like normally don't have access to. Oh, this one's tough. Max HP means that I'll be able to trade versus Cinder. Which is kind of notable. Otherwise, we kind of like moved away from crit besides on like Incinerate. Incinerate having a 36% chance to crit is... Eh? Give me the max HP. Give me another rare augment, please. Yeah, besides the big pog of that Ermog's dropping two, like, thunder in a bottles, or whatever you want to call them, bottle, tempest, bottle, temp, temp temptated, the bottles. <laughs> um... really unsure about what's going on here. Well, that's great. I'll take that.
Oh, this is super spooky. Oh, I missed that. Are you serious? That's, uh, terrible. You're auto-targeting me. I want you to hopefully perish. I think we can hit you with this. Hit you guys with this. Vacuum seal everybody, pick this up. It's not really going to do much of anything. And then all this is for next turn. Pile of tiles, it's something. Um, hmm. Not sure we have two nukes that we would want, plus one stacked and marked here. Like, I suppose if we have single target, we splice and then constrict. That's something, so it's grass, splice, constrict which then would rotate all three of those around. We would get our cooldowns back. Eh. I would honestly rather just put plus 50 damage onto Potent Stitch. Is this plus 50 into the equation or plus 50 total? Because I believe there's a purple that is plus 35 per, which would make it, um, this is just plus total. Yeesh. Another base cooldown, why not? Hoi. What do we have that we want to grind? Pile of tiles, perhaps? Curios doesn't really do much for us. We could get rid of Paradigm Shift. I'm not sure that that's actually, like, bad for us right now, though. I think that it's pretty decent. Um, I don't know. Pile of Tiles is... Let's walk past here. Go to the shop. See what we have to replace stuff with. Blooming on. So that's going to smite uh, the boss every turn because they're likely going to be burning. That's really the only thing that we see here. So what, we melt pile of tiles? Seems like it. Pilot tiles by Blooming Un. I guess one thing to ask is, is this settling? Kinda. What else could we possibly want? Um, it 
It's really unfortunate that we grinded that for, like, pretty much nothing. Blooming on is fine. Blooming on might get ground up, but I think that it's going to be fine. God, we have, like, literally zero damage. There it is. We found the damage. Okay. gonna be a lot of damage oh man um like nothing else is really gonna do anything so I guess we might as well just uh bind them all up not have single target if there's not enemies around and we don't really have time to solve that by cinder tether will do that tether will definitely do that okay that might be our saving grace here after using thread reduce cooldown of stitch and constrict by one that's um pretty big right now cross stitch actually isn't very good versus cinder so we're going to ignore that I also didn't take a look on if we took an extra turn. No extra turns. Love to see it. I felt like we were doing good, but then like nothing happened. I don't think that we can get rid of any of our... Like, uh, ambusher sets. It's giving us like too much.
Not having actually any stats and burn damage is kind of killing us right now. This is only 300 damage. Good lord. That is no longer going to kill. And of course their lifelink. Oh, come on, man. I don't want to pull. Guess I nuke that guy. That guy, call it a day. Just take ten damage. I legitimately don't know how we uh, get this damage in. That's it. Bone Calcifier, what are you? Not great. Your Striker, at least. What else do we got here? More Bone Calcifier. Gives up some DR. Tongue of the Frozen Flame gives us some Molten. It's something. Can we get another Molten out of here? Be kind of nice. Faded Mandala. Cute. Teeth on a string might heal us up enough. There's Acknowledgement. Acknowledgement might actually get us out of here. We grind up enough stuff. And then we like buy um, anything with molten to get more burn damage. Okay. So I think we need... I think we need future willers. We can probably get rid of decayed binding maybe. Certainly does suck when we don't have it, though. Get rid of Paradigm Shift. And I'm going to be honest, probably get rid of Blooming Un. I don't know. But, um... Bone Calcifier is probably getting uh, liquidated. Take tongue. Take acknowledgement. We would still need to grind something in order to fit something in here. Oh, here's our health. And I think we absolutely take that. There's really nothing else here that's going to like do anything extravagant for us. What is the least useful thing that we have here? It's probably, honestly, this Blooming on at this point. So we go ahead, we get rid of that. And we just need any Burn Vestige. Any Burn Vestige will give us access to another 30% bonus. On top of this 25% bonus there is 50% bonus damage versus enemies that are burning. On top of all the burn that we do here... Uh, maybe it'll be insane with the first three turns of just spamming incinerate. I need to believe. <laughs> that is pretty much it. 
none of these. There's Infernal Cascade. So that's actually, that plus four should go into each and every condition that we have here. That's, it's exactly what we're looking for. Okay. Okay. We might as well actually heal. Oh, man. Not feeling so hot about this, I'll be honest. This ended just about as terribly as I thought it would. Take two, this should be fine. This is our last turn of no cooldowns, basically. Take this, thread you, might as well. Get one health back. Alright, we gotta beat you now. With cooldowns. Guess might as well take the Cleansing Shroom. This should be fine. Yeah, we're fine here. That uh, shrine for the little bit of health actually like coming in clutch here. That one was pretty good, and it was riding the frickin' rails the whole way there. Whew! Um, that last minute uh, acknowledgement of exemption carrying us to victory, re-rolling into the Infernal Cascade pretty much at the last possible moment, still having enough to afford the, um, the heal at the end there, our Tempest Wraths doing work. Hard to deny that. Um, otherwise, like, maybe we could have done it without Tempest Wrath, but that did a, a significant amount of damage to um, Cinder for free. 
uh, and then of course like the Ermog's egg to give us this and the quilling hoarder so that we could make all the money that we used to buy everything. Like literally everything came together. And I think that I just misplayed like a couple of turns here that would have made like a, you know, a little bit of a difference. Um, taking damage on that uh, elite fight, of course, lost us a considerable chunk of uh, points, but we only ended up losing like 950 total. Like that's not terribly bad. Again, we're within 46,000. Like that's pretty good. We almost have 47 um anyways hopefully the run was entertaining for you guys or at least educational if you have any feedback whatsoever be it questions comments concerns with play alerts be sure to put those down in the comments below and until next time i'll catch you guys around